If you've ever sat in a car, bus, or a bike, you must have noticed how sometimes you tend to slide up or down your seat. And you'll have noticed this usually happens when the vehicle starts moving or when it's coming to a stop. What you've experienced there is called acceleration and deceleration. Acceleration is the name given to the process of changing speed or velocity. Whenever an object changes how fast it's moving, whether in absolute terms or relative to a reference point, it's undergoing acceleration. In other words, acceleration is the rate of change of speed or velocity. Now, this is a very common phenomenon that we experience and observe all around us. From cars starting off right after the traffic light turns green, to you suddenly stopping to avoid crashing into someone in the hallway. We see and experience objects changing their speed all the time. For engineers and practitioners in the logistics industry, calculating acceleration and its effect on speed or velocity is extremely important. But how do we calculate acceleration? Well, as we've talked about earlier, acceleration is the rate of change of speed or velocity. And we can calculate it by finding the average change in said speed or velocity per unit time. And this means that average acceleration is the difference between the starting and the ending speed or velocity divided by the time interval between them. Acceleration is therefore denoted in meters per second square. Now, let's test this equation with some examples. Let's say we have a car that's starting off from rest and it's speeding up to 10 meters per second over four seconds. What was its average acceleration? Well, since the car ended up at 10 meters per second, that's the final speed. And since the car started from rest, the initial speed is zero meters per second. Now we know this entire process took four seconds. And when we plug this into the equation, we get 2.5 meters per second square as the acceleration. You notice the number we've gotten at the end is positive. And this is because the change in speed is also positive. Now let's imagine this car slows down to five meters per second and it takes five seconds to do so. Well, in this case, the initial speed is 10 meters per second because that's the speed it was traveling at before it started to slow down. Now the car slowed down to five meters per second. And that's why that's our final speed. And the car took five seconds to do all of this. And that's why our time interval is five seconds. Now, when we plug these into the formula, we get an average acceleration of negative one meters per second square. Now, since the car was slowing down, it was undergoing negative speed change, which is exactly why we see the negative sign with our acceleration values. This is the reason why acceleration is a vector quantity, regardless of whether we derive it from speed or velocity. Acceleration always shows not just the magnitude of change of speed, but also whether the change was positive or negative. Now, if we were to represent the two situations in a distance time graph, you'd see that both acceleration and deceleration appear in the form of curves. And this suggests a change in speed with time. And this is something we've covered in the previous units as well. When we talked about how acceleration is basically changing speed and the distance time graph shows changing slopes, which form curves. And that's how they represent acceleration. The concept of acceleration has many applications and implications in kinematics. And we'll be exploring those in the coming units. So keep those learning hats on.